All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead, open those up today. We're in 2 Peter, 2 Peter, we're going to look at chapter 3, verse 3, and then I want us to look at verse 8 through 9, and we're looking this week where Peter speaks to us about fear and anxiety. We looked at the book of, of Acts. We also looked at um, uh, verse 8 and 9 here. We've, we've uh, looked at Peter's first epistle, his second epistle. But today I want us to see this concept of how the enemy, the spirit of Antichrist, the Bible calls it, in the world around us, is desiring to get God's people, uh, just like Satan did in the Garden of Eden, desiring to get us to question God, to question that we can trust what God has told us in his word. And Peter talks about that, and when we allow that to happen, Fear and anxiety, worry, will be the direct result of those things. Look at it with me. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first. You need to know this. That scoffers, well, they will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. Scoffers will come. They're walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now, Peter tells us, listen, scoffers are coming in the last day, and they're going to say, listen, how can you believe this Jesus? He's told you that, uh, that he's coming again soon. Well, they've always been saying that, but they will fully forget this. Verse 5, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. They will fully forget that God already flooded the earth. It's already happened. God's already told us that was going to happen and it happened. Verse 7, but the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of a godly men. Remember, God said, I'll never flood the earth again, I promise. I'm never going to flood the earth. Remember the rainbow at the end of Noah and the ark that was pointed up. It was, you know, we look at a rainbow, we think of what, lucky charms and now homosexuality has tried to take over the rainbow. But what was the rainbow? The rainbow was a sign of God's covenant to us. And it was a, it was actually a, a work, a, a, an object of weaponry. It was a bow that was pointed upwards. And God saying, the next time I bring judgment, the judgment is going to point to me. And that, that was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, right? At the cross, Jesus took the wrath of God. The bow was shot through the heart of Jesus, God's son. But God will, the Bible tells us, destroy the earth with the fire. Uh, it, it, all things are held together by him. I believe that God is the one that holds the atoms together in our body. And how is he going to destroy the earth? Well, he's just going to go like this. That's it. And it's going to be a nuclear blast. It's all going to be over. And they will fully forget this. Listen, the time is coming. And you say, well, why has the Lord waited so long? Well, look what it says, verse 8. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So here we go. God's been gone for a thousand years. For 2,000 years it's been since Jesus was here. Well, in heaven, in God's timetable, a thousand years is as a day. A day is as a thousand years. So God's been gone for, for two days. He's coming back on the... The third day, that kind of kind of reminds me of something in the Bible. What was that? The crucifixion, burial, and, and resurrection, right? Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. If you wonder why the Lord hasn't returned yet, it's here. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What is this? Listen, if you're getting concerned or worried or anxious about what you're seeing in the world around us, seeing on the, the news, seeing in world wars and events, remember, God's got everything under control. You can trust him. You can rely upon him. You can believe him for all these things. Stay the course. Watch what the Lord will do. Watch what he'll do as you trust him today. Father, I pray that your people would be blessed. I pray that they would be encouraged I pray, Lord Jesus, that if fear, anxiety, or worry has uh, begun to creep into any of your people's hearts in regards to what they're seeing in the world around them, I pray they would rest again in you, trust you with all their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.